Hello, how are you guys doing tonight? Are you ready to worship the Lord? He's already here. Oh, Jesus. Just close your eyes. Just posture your hearts to Him tonight. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrow that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion and crushed for our sin. could be healed and this is the Jesus that we come to worship tonight that we can't offer him pieces of our hearts but we have to offer him everything tonight because he didn't hold it back he didn't even look like a man he was so that we could come tonight and worship him This holy man, this precious Lamb of God. Jesus, let us see you rightly tonight. Let us behold you. Don't bring him just pieces, bring him everything tonight. Bring all of you tonight, no matter what you've done, it doesn't matter. He just wants you. That's why he died was for you. To come. Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? Come on, just say, isn't he worthy? You're worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy. So Jesus, we come. We come tonight. We're so hungry for you. And we have to bring you something costly. It has to cost you something because it cost him everything it cost him everything and he did it with joy so Jesus we come before you tonight with joy no matter what we came in here carrying tonight no matter what we are or who we are or what we've done Jesus we know that we can run to your feet tonight we know that we can come before you the precious lamb and we can pour our oil come on start pouring your oil start pouring your oil start pouring your oil don't hold any of it back don't hold any of it back start thanking him tonight Jesus thank you thank you that we can worship you freely that we can worship you freely we love you Jesus we're so in love with you we're so in love with you come on just tell him how much you love him tell him how much you love him tonight he's already here he's already here he's ready his arms are open please come running to Jesus we love you Jesus we love you Jesus we love you Jesus come on just lift up just lift up your voice right now just lift up a new song to him right now Jesus we're hungry for your presence we ask for the more tonight we ask for the more we ask for the increase tonight you love to do and declare to us Jesus declare to us his name declare to us his nature oh come on lift up a shout of hunger lift up a cry of desperation oh we need your presence God we're nothing without you we're nothing without you we're nothing without you 
Jesus, you are my portion. You are the one that satisfies my longings. You are the comforter. You are the healer. You are the restorer. You are the helper. You are the provider. You are God and there is no other. You are God and there is no other. Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. The first, the last, almighty, holy, 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 holy. Come on, lift up a shout. Lift up a shout.
you shatter the box that we've put you in. God, I thank you that where your presence is, there is freedom, there is liberty. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I just feel like we need to get undignified tonight. I feel like we need to go a little bit crazy tonight.
lamb is worthy. but just even as we worship I felt all week long as I was praying about tonight that I felt the Lord was going to heal diabetes tonight if you came in and you're diabetic I declare over you the name of Jesus and I want to tell you you don't need to strive to get your healing you're here in his presence he's going to do it anyway so just worship him as we continue tonight just worship just worship just set your your face like flint upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith.
Cause there's no sickness in my 
let's just lift our hands to the Lord, please. Come on, every hand, every hand lifted. Jesus, we love you. And we, we want to go deeper into your presence tonight. We worship you. Come on, just lift your mouth. Begin to sing in the spirit all over the room. Come on, just for about a minute, I just want you to sing in the spirit. Lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice.
sing that. Tell him. give you glory tonight there is no one like you there is no one like you you are beautiful and you do all things well you are majestic and kind and loving and faithful we look to you tonight we have nowhere else to go Come on, just close your eyes and look at Jesus. There's no one like you. And we need you. We need you. We come by the blood tonight, the, the blood of the Lamb. We enter your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for the cross and the blood. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for your word precious presence of the Spirit. You are lovely. You're the fairest among 10,000. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Let your presence rest on your people tonight. Change us, touch us, have us. Restore us, heal us tonight. Wonderful Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now lift a praise. Come on, lift a praise. Come on, lift a praise. Jesus, we love you. You are holy. You are worthy. You are worthy of glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Worthy to be praised. Greatly, greatly. 
greatly to be praised. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lord. Mighty, mighty King, there is no one like you. Just keep your eyes closed there. Jesus, we give you all our attention. Every ounce of our attention tonight. Come for you and you alone. Move in power tonight. Take us to the end of ourselves. Teach us to surrender and let go in your presence. There are many of you here tonight who, if you would just let go, even right now, the Lord would touch you. The Lord would touch you. There's no need to hang on. There's no need to grip your own life. You can trust Jesus to touch you. And when he touches you, it's always beautiful. Right now, just, just, just yield. Just give yourself to him. Say that. Say, Jesus, fill me with your spirit again. Now just let him. Just let him. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. I give you glory. You are worthy of praise. But your presence changes tonight. It's in your presence that we are changed. Give us eyes to see you. Let this night be a night of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for miracles tonight. Great miracles. I thank you for what you'll do here to glorify your name. Not unto us, O Lord, but unto you. Be all glory and honor. Be all glory and honor. be aware of your presence tonight. More aware of your presence than my sermon. More aware of your presence than the person next to us. More aware of your presence than the building. Capture our hearts tonight. Fall in power tonight. Shake us to the core tonight. There is no one like you. We love you. We look to you. You are our Savior. Save us from this corrupt world. You are mighty to save. Some of you have come in broken tonight in desperate, desperate need. Jesus is a savior. He saves us when we're dying. Everybody seated. This is a very holy time. You know, one of the great tragedies about church in the West is how lightly we esteem communion. And it is a sacred privilege to receive communion. In a few moments, I'm going to preach the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ. It is good news because the gospel is Jesus. In fact, I'm gonna preach it now. 
If I start talking about the gospel, I'm, I'm hooked, so. For a moment, as you're holding these elements in your hand, don't open it yet. I want you to realize that communion is so powerful that it brings healing and life to those who belong to the Lord, who discern it properly. But the scripture teaches that it brings weakness and death to those who do not discern the body and blood of Jesus properly. This is a powerful meal. This is a meal of life and death. I want you to think about that for a moment. This is not mere tradition. I've said this many times to you. Nothing in the new covenant is to be mere tradition. The Bible says that some would have a form of godliness but deny the power. And any time we step into mere tradition, that is exactly what we are stepping into. Form with no power. Say amen. But if taking this precious meal brings weakness and early death, according to Paul's writings, he said, many have fallen asleep among you. Many have grown weak and fallen asleep among you because they have not discerned the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something about us that uh, we want everything just to make perfect sense to us. So it's hard for us to believe that we receive true presence when we receive this precious meal. But how many of you know the Lord's ways are higher than our own? Say amen. amen. Billy Graham once said, how many of you could teach algebra to an ant? <laughs> an ant is smart. It can find its own food. It can organize an army. It can build its own home. But if you try to teach algebra to an ant, it's a hopeless situation. How much higher are God's ways than ours? Much higher than algebra is <laughs> to an ant. The answer is quite simple. By the Holy Spirit, as we receive the bread and the juice tonight, we receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. And he is powerful. I said, he is powerful. This meal is a family meal. It's a family meal. This meal unlocks the power of the new covenant. Every covenant is unlocked by a meal. It's the way of the Lord. When the Lord made a covenant with Israel, he unlocked the covenant, consummated the covenant with a meal on Mount Sinai. God met with the elders of Israel and they ate together. Israel was sprinkled in blood, the covenant was sealed, and God kept his end of the deal. This precious covenant, Jesus said, this is the cup, listen carefully, of the new covenant, of a better covenant in my blood. And you should be thankful tonight. If you belong to Jesus, if you have given your life to Jesus, if you are following Jesus wholeheartedly, his blood speaks a better word at the throne forever. That should excite you. That means every time Matt screws up, which I'm sure is only twice a day. <laughs> Kelly's like, you shouldn't lie in church, Michael. Every time, listen carefully, every time you have a thought that isn't one of his, his blood speaks a better word. Every time you do something 
incorrectly, with the wrong motive, his blood speaks a better word. Every time the accuser stands before the Lord and cries out regarding uh, your weakness, his blood speaks a better word. Do you know that Romans teaches us that if height, depth, powers, princip- any, if every devil and the devil himself stood before the Lord and accused you regarding everything you've done, his blood would still cry out and speak a better word. You need to thank God for the covenant. Thank God for the blood. This is life in Jesus. But tonight, the worst thing you could do if you don't belong to Jesus is to just take this meal out of tradition and mere repetition. The Bible actually teaches that it brings weakness to our body and can cause death. That's what the scriptures teach. He said, many have fallen asleep among you for this reason. And so I would be doing you a disservice to just offer this precious meal and not preach the gospel to you. You need to come to Jesus tonight. Listen, look into my eyes. You need to come to the Lord Jesus himself. Proof that you belong to Jesus is not the fact that you prayed at an altar. Proof of the Christian life is not us attending a meeting. Trust me, I've been doing this a long time and some of the weirdest people I have ever met in my life are in Christian events. Well, I can promise you, I have met a lot of devils in Christian events. How is it that a Christian has a devil? Proof is not our attendance. Proof is his residence. His residence. Not my attendance. Not whether or not I checked off a prayer card, as wonderful as that is. We've, we do all that. We have follow-up systems, of course. But that is not the fruit of being born again. The word again means above. That's what the Greek word means. Born from above. I have been born of the Spirit. Therefore, the Spirit lives in me. Listen carefully. This is the same Spirit who is called the Spirit of Christ. Okay, stay with me now. That means the fruit of being born again is the life of Christ in me. Not whether or not I pray to prayer. Because a lot of y'all pray a prayer like it's a delete button. It's not the point. Jesus is not a sin eraser. He is life. He is life. If you're not free from sin, you need to get born again. Born from above. Isn't that wonderful? I said, isn't that wonderful? You can come to the place in your Christian life where sin looks disgusting. Where it's not worth a second look. Where it doesn't bind you and it doesn't look as powerful as the Lord. You can come to a place where you simply resist it by looking at his beauty and you can do that 24-7 all day long until sin looks like what it is, a feeble attempt at binding you. No thank you. No thank you. Sin shall not master us. 
How do you know if you're saved? It's the life of Jesus being lived through you. He said, dude, this is intense. This is serious talk. See, we, we've taught a generation that if you believe the right stuff about Jesus, you're saved. The only problem with that is Satan believes the right stuff about Jesus. Satan believes that Jesus still works. Much of the church hasn't figured that one out. Because it's easy to control a dead God. People ask me, why do you believe in miracles? I said, because I believe in the resurrection. He's alive. He's alive. I said, he's alive. He's alive. Is he alive in you? I hope so. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen up. Tonight, I'd like all of you to stand. Tonight, you can come listen carefully, to a fountain that flows. It flows from Emmanuel's veins. That's a name for Jesus, God with us. That blood flows today and it screams and cries out, mercy, mercy, mercy. And Jesus wants to save you tonight. And we need a savior. Living in sin is not a small issue. Sin leads to death. It doesn't give you a bad day. Sin to give you life and life abundantly. You, you have an the Savior. With every head bowed and eye closed. Listen carefully. Don't pass this night up and don't come to this precious meal that we're going to take in just a few moments wondering with any doubt as to whether or not you're born again. You say, Michael, I want to know that I'm born again. I want my sin washed away. I want you to lift your hand. You say, I want to be free from sin. Completely free from sin. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, get down here. Come on, come. Come on, come on, get down here. Every person who raised their hand, or you wish you did, come on, give them a hand. Come on down, give your life to Jesus. Come on down. Thank you, Jesus, come on down. Give your life to the Lord. Come on down. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, give the Lord praise. They're, keep coming, keep coming. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. They're still, come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. If you've come forward tonight, listen. This is awesome. Young, middle-aged. I love this. I love seeing the Holy Spirit at work. If you've come down tonight, everything changes now. I want our team to surround them. Just stand behind them, please. Everything changes now. And if, if, if you wish you came while I'm praying, you will not interrupt me. You can come down. Come and give your heart to the Lord. For those of you who came, tonight we are going to, like children, just give our hearts to the Lord and receive the finished work of Jesus Christ. We're going to ask Him to come live inside of us and make our hearts His home. Does that sound wonderful? All of you who came forward? Can everybody please stretch their hands? For those of you who came forward, and I want all of us just to pray in agreement with them. We are going to pray a prayer. It is not about reciting the prayer. It's about saying, saying it from your heart, from the depths of your soul to Jesus who loves you. Are you ready? Are you ready? You ready to give him everything? For those of you who come forward, are you ready to give Jesus everything? There's a complete exchange that takes place now. Say this. Heavenly Father, 
Come on, I want to hear you. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight a sinner. Save my soul. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. That you died on the cross. That you shed your blood. That you were buried. And that you've been raised from the dead. Because you are God Almighty. Jesus, I believe that you are coming back again. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are the Son of God. So tonight, I give you my life. I give you my life. You are my Lord, my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. Thank you, God. Now, for those of you who came forward in the lobby, listen carefully, there is a Jesus school booth. You're going to meet John and Jenna there after service. It's important. We're not going to try to like do something sneaky to get your address. That's not how we roll. So what, all we're going to do is we want to help you walk and begin this life of discipleship with Jesus. We want to help equip you, connect with you, make sure you have a Bible, and then help equip you with other resources. That's our heart. We just want you to see what it looks like to live a victorious life in Jesus. And you can. I said, and you can. All right, I want you to stretch your hands one more time towards, one more time towards these precious, precious children of the Lord. Now, you guys who came forward, listen, Jesus said he would not leave us as an orphan. He said he would come back for us. He also said this. He said that he would send a comforter, the person of the Holy Spirit, and that he would teach us and remind us of everything Jesus ever said, that he would turn our hearts to Jesus, that he would testify of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us to live a victorious Christian life. So we're all going to stretch our hands and agree, listen carefully, that the Holy Spirit would become your best friend and empower you. Amen? All right, stretch your hands, guys. Let's do this together. Father, in Jesus' name, you told us to come. You don't have to repeat. You just stretch your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, you told us to come to ask of our Father. And you said he would give. How much more? He would give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. So for those of you who come forward, I want you to ask, ask, ask the Father, ask your Father to give the Holy Spirit to you. Jesus, you are the great baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. Empower these vessels. Teach them to walk in fellowship with you. Change them forever and use their lives for your glory. I pray that millions would come into the kingdom through these lives. Come on, say amen millions would come into the kingdom through these lives in Jesus name in Jesus name come on give the Lord praise thank you Lord thank you Lord all right you guys can go back to your seat please go to the Jesus school booth it will not take long as soon as service is over okay can we give the Lord praise one more time welcome them home God bless you bless you guys thank you Lord isn't the Lord wonderful all right. Can I just hear those keys a little more? Let's take our elements, please. What a wonderful privilege to receive Holy Communion together. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, let's all come before the Lord now and ask his forgiveness. Lord, we, we come, we ask your forgiveness, Lord. Cleanse us again with your precious blood. Wash us. Purify our motives. 
Forgive us for ever entering your presence for any other reason than to worship you. This has never been about us or our ministries. This is about you. This isn't about anything but you. And precious Holy Spirit, as we receive the body and blood of Jesus, I ask you to begin moving in power and delivering people from sickness and bondage, demonic power. I pray that the moment the elements touch their lips, that the Holy Spirit power of the Trinity would begin to flow. Let's take the bread for a moment, please. Let's lift it because Jesus was lifted on the cross. Lift this bread. Jesus, tonight we lift this because you were lifted. You were lifted on the tree. You became a spectacle and you bore our shame. You were stripped naked so we would be clothed in your glory and presence. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. Say amen. We are healed tonight. Let it be said of Jesus' image in every home represented, that disease is illegal in our midst. As you said in your word, if there be any sick among you, let him call for the elders. If there be any sick. Make sickness a rarity among us. Jesus, we look to your stripes tonight. We thank you for your broken body. You said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take, eat, take and eat it. And so tonight we receive of the body of the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your flesh as true food. In Jesus' name, let's receive. lift the cup praise you Lord thank you for the blood oh say amen, amen. say amen. amen thank you for the blood thank you for the blood of Jesus there's power in the blood wonder-working power in the blood. You've placed a hedge around us, your blood. And I plead the blood tonight over every marriage, over every family, over every missionary, over every church and ministry represented, over every leader. I plead the blood over every, over every life under the sound of my voice tonight. Thank you for the blood that flowed from your head, that flowed from your pores, that flowed from your hands and your feet and your side. I praise you for the blood. Precious Jesus. Come on, every eye closed, just look to him. Thank him for the blood now. Just in your own words, thank him for the blood. No one moving around, just thank him for the blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Everyone watching in your homes, thank him for the blood. The Holy Spirit cannot resist the blood of Jesus. They bear witness together. Release the power of the Holy Ghost as we receive the blood of Jesus. Let's receive. 
Thank you, Jesus. We remember you. Everyone just stay seated right where you are. The Lord's going to begin moving here. We remember you. Just lift your hands to heaven. Just begin loving him. Begin praying in the spirit very softly, very softly. I worship you. I give you praise. Just softly, softly, softly. I give you all the glory. I give you all the glory. The back of somebody's neck is being healed. If, if you came, if you've had a pain in your neck, specifically in the back of your neck, I want you to lift your hand. Just wave at me. If you're next to them and you came with them and they're okay with you putting your hand on them, I want you to put your hand on them. If, if you came with them, if you're in the same group and they're okay with it. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your healing power. Release your wonderful healing power, Holy Spirit. Let the, the very power of the Holy Ghost touch their neck now and loose it and loose it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there's a lady here you actually feel fire on your body I want everyone just to keep blessing the Lord in the spirit very softly very softly don't stop don't stop there's a lady here you actually feel fire and I don't want anyone moving. On you, you feel warmth on you, I should say. You had complications from a pregnancy of some kind. It just messed you up. And right now, you feel the power of God on you. I want you to wave at me. Where? Ah, stand up. Stand up. Stand, stand, stand. Put your hand on her. Is that, who's that with you there? Put your hand on her. Are you okay with them touching you? Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, stretch your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Is there scar tissue and stuff? What, what's going on? Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He doesn't see it anymore. It's okay. Father, in Jesus' name, restore her body. Restore her body. In the name of Jesus, restore even her physical body, whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. You see it no more. You see it no more. Let's stay with the Lord here. Let's stay with the Lord. The Lord is moving. The Lord is moving. The Lord is moving. Come on, we can't miss this moment now. Man tiel fe cora. Nin tier me kenti ar bacare. Nin tier me contia. Praise you, Jesus. See, that's the sound. That's the sound of deliverance. She's saying, You're so good. Yes. Is there a woman here who had a surgery on your upper body? It did not heal properly. Wave at me. Wave at me. You had a surgery on the upper part of your body. Anyone? All I'm seeing is waist up. It could be somebody on the live feed. Is there anybody here in the room? Where? Where, where, where? Where? Who, did you come with that man there? Put your hand on her. Yeah. Father, did you come together? Where, where was your surgery? You don't have to. Is it private? You don't have to say. In Oregon. But where on the body? Right there. What? It did not heal properly. Is that what happened? Kidney. Kidney. Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, stretch your hands. I thank you for your healing power. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every single bit of pain. Thank you, Jesus, for your 
power. For your power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's a heavy presence here. Let's not squander it. Let's prove to the Lord that we can steward him. In moments like this, the Lord not only moves, but he watches us to see if we are worth visiting again. So a lady here with arthritis in the hands and your joints actually lock up. They actually lock up and, and, and it's not just pain, but there's stiffness involved. Anyone here? A lady? Anyone? Thank you, Lord. Anyone? Where? 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 Oh, right here. Is, is, is Eduardo here? Come here, buddy. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. Come on, run over there. It's your wife. You have authority. Just, just, just grab her hands. Hold her hands. You don't have to do anything super spiritual. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your power flow through her body. Let the pain leave completely. Now loosen her hands. Let her feel your touch, just the anointing of the Spirit on her whole body. Loosen her whole body, the whole body. It's not just the hands. The, just let a wave of your healing glory go right through her and completely heal in Jesus' mighty name. Let her go, Eduardo, for a moment. Just stand right there. What do you feel? It's hot. It's hot. Would you be able to look for a difference? Do they feel different? No. Not yet. What do you feel on your body? What, do you feel the presence of God on you? It's hot. It's hot. Father, I thank you for finishing this wonderful work the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we love you Lord we love you Jesus hallelujah oh hallelujah 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 Lord worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb. Heal your people. It's in the covenant, Lord. Heal your people. Don't look to my prayer tonight. Look to Jesus. Heal your people. And I don't have to call you out. That's not important. The Lord is much bigger than that. Heal your people. Is there someone here with major hormonal uh, imbalance, like your, your hormones have been out of whack. I, I just wave at me. Wave at me. Father, stretch your hands there if you're near her. Father, in the name of Jesus, restore her body. Restore her body. Thank you for perfect balance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't need me to call anything out. All you need to do is look to the Lord right now. We are in His presence. He will do it. He will do it. Thank you, Jesus. All you have to do is ask Him. It's the children's bread. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Can you just look up and say, Jesus, I love you. You are wonderful. Isn't the Lord good? 
so wonderful. So wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. favoring the ladies tonight. If you've uh, had a thyroid issue, I just want you to take your hand and put it there. By faith, put your hand there. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your daughter who has come for a healing in the thyroid. We declare your word over by your stripes she is healed. Let your fire fall on them. Let your tangible presence fall on them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to begin just sharing the word of God here in just a moment. and We'll receive the offering at the end of service. little uh I'm feeling good <laughs> isn't he wonderful can we give him praise just one more time Jesus. you are wonderful oh the Lord is good I said the Lord is good the Lord is good Oh, good, good. Yeah, I didn't check on you, did I? What happened? Stand up. Give me a mic there, Ryan. Some of you need to be happy. What happened? Um, well, it's... Uh Basically, I've, I've had pain all over my body since. Hey, Ryan, can you hold it higher so she doesn't have to do Pilates <laughs> to get to it? <laughs> well, I feel no more pain, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, I, I've been having complications for a really long time. How long? <laughs> I mean, you mentioned three different things actually tonight. Thyroid, and, and I felt fire earlier on my neck. On your neck? And I... What was wrong with your neck? Um, just my body's been out of alignment a lot. Uh -huh. And I have three, well, two discs that aren't there in the, in the, um, what is that called? An MRI? Yeah. <laughs> and Where they are you were from? pinching a nerve. Um, or so we came Oregon? from Portland, Oregon. We basically couldn't breathe over there. We were, we could, had to get out of the smoke. And so we came over here last night. Came week. here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we're glad you came. I <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is the first time we've ever gone to church together. Um, I've been with him for almost four years, and um, so God said for, for me to ask him this morning to go, and we kept going to different places, and it just didn't feel right, and so... <laughs> what happened to your body? Tell us. Uh, well, I felt that, that warmth... Uh -huh. like fire and I knew that was God yeah. um, and so I I just thought oh man I really don't want anybody to be giving me any kind of attention and here I am yeah. <laughs> so it's a little I'm a little embarrassed right now but it, for, for God I'll do you know I'll do this so mm -hmm. I am just grateful that I I can move my whole body how long <laughs> How long has it been? Um, 
Well, slowly God has been healing me, but I, it's been, gosh, um, two years ago I stopped working because of this. Really? Yeah. So you've been suffering for two years. Yeah. And are you pain free right now? I'm pain free right wow. now. Wow. Wow, amazing. Wow. Oh, come on, come on. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Did anyone else lose? If, if, you, if you came in in pain and the pain's gone, I want to know. Just raise your hand. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Here, what happened to you? Yeah? Yeah. Yes, my neck was hurting real bad. Like, what happened? Just, um... No, I mean, tonight, what happened? Oh, tonight, whenever she, well, whenever you were talking, I kind of wasn't paying attention, but... In the time, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, <laughs> man, that just tells you Jesus is way bigger than our sermon. Uh, <laughs> she put her... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the honesty. I'm sorry. But then she put, <laughs> you said about the neck, and I was like, whoa, that's me. And I felt like a... <laughs> you mean I was preaching the gospel... <laughs> And you weren't paying attention and the Lord still healed you? I don't know. <laughs> you better give Jesus praise that he's that good. So, so what, what, what's going on? I just feel all hot. The I forgive you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, tell us, sorry. That just came out, sorry. <laughs> I'm glad it did. As soon as she put her hand on me, it just started tingling. She, she moved her hand, and, and then you were talking, and then I felt all the tingling all down my back. I felt like oil was going on my head. And then now it still feels like oil's going down my head. I feel all hot. Wow. That's the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. Amazing. So amazing. Do, are, do you know Jesus? I'm in, I just started Jesus School online a week ago. Oh. Wow. So have you given him your life? You've given him your whole heart? Well, it was hard for me to pay attention because my neck was hurting so bad. Well, let's do it now. But let's give him everything now. Okay. Come here. Come on. Come here. Oh, amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. That's crazy. Amazing. All right. Come here. Help her. I'll come to you. All right. Everyone stand. This is holy. All right. Jesus healed you because my sermon was boring. <laughs> you know, sometimes the Lord has to move because the preaching is boring. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. You know, I heard this said one time from a great revivalist. She said, don't worry. Well, don't pay attention now. Okay. <laughs> She said, this guy preached and it was the worst message. And the power of God fell at a Bible school. And, and the Lord started moving over the student body. And he said the word, I mean, it was just horrible, the, the sermon. So this young preacher asked this lady who had been trusted with revivals in the past, very powerful woman. Uh, he said, I don't understand how the Lord fell on that after this guy preached. She said, oh, sweetie, sometimes he has to fall just to get the people to forget what they just heard. <laughs> we always think when God moves, it's an endorsement, but sometimes he's just trying to help people forget. Isn't the Lord wonderful? All right, stretch your hands. What's your name? Wendy. Wendy, tonight, we're gonna give him everything. Your whole heart, your past, your sin, your failure, stuff you're embarrassed of he's gonna forget it all right now and when you stand before him he'll never bring it up to you again isn't that amazing she's shocked he will never remind you of your sin again the Bible says he will throw it into a sea of forgetfulness and and, and listen to this your sin and you, after we pray, are going to be as far as the east is from the west. Amen. It'll be no more. You ready? 
Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Stretch your hands. Let's all pray together. You ready, Wendy? I'm ready. Say, Father, here's my life. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. Save my soul. Cleanse me. Save me. Jesus, I put all my hope in you. All my trust in you. I believe that you died on the cross. That you shed your blood. Yeah, help her, guys. That you are the Son of God. And that you are the King of Kings. Jesus, I believe that you have been seated at the right hand of God. It's okay. I'm telling you, the Lord is here. You see, this is the gospel. You know why she's crying? Because she, it's too good to be true. Because it's better than true. It is true. It's, it's so good. Wendy, come on, a little more. You ready? Jesus, take my life as it is. I am yours forever. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Help her, guys. How do you feel? I just feel like heat's all over my body. I feel like heat's all over my body and, and just vibrations and pins and needles. You ever felt anything like this before? Not like this. No. <laughs> Nothing even compares, huh? No. Isn't he wonderful? Uh, I don't think he's finished with me yet either, because... <laughs> still doing it, right? Come on, give the Lord praise. Help her, guys. Go with her. Wow. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. All right, grab a seat, quick, quick, quick. Let's stay in his presence. Stay in his presence. Don't start talking. Don't start moving. This is our home. His presence is home. His glory is home. Anybody else? Anybody else feel like the Lord healed them tonight? Like pain left, symptoms left. Yeah, yeah, who, who, who? What happened? Look at Ryan working hard. I, the last like month, month and a half, there's been just like tightness. And like, uh -huh. like sharp stabbing, it go from like, like the base of my neck even up into like my head, uh -huh. and just would be like really painful. What happened tonight? It's like really loose. <laughs> Was there a moment that thought you felt the Lord touch you? Yeah, he, my roommate put my put his hand on my neck and. Was it and during just, or was it after communion? Yeah, yeah. And then how long were, had you been in pain? About like a month and a half, two months, something like that. Put the camera on him, guys. Yeah. So a month and a half, it's been like that. Yeah. Wow, and then, and then you just felt it leave. Just like a little bit of like electricity and, and heat, warmth. And like when he, I thought it was just warm because of his hand, but then he took his hand off and it was like fire. Like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing. 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 Amazing, Jesus. Amazing, Jesus. I think some of you walked in with pain, but you haven't checked. Don't look for your pain now. Look for your healing. Go ahead. I want you to check your body. Let me know. Hmm? What happened? See, guys, when you walk with Jesus, listen carefully. It's step by step. You yield, he does more. You yield, he does more. You yield, he does more. If it bores you, he doesn't. Except for Wendy's situation. That was just much bigger. What happened? Look how uh, fast Ryan got up there. <laughs> I have a uh, bad crushed vertebrae in my neck, and I get pain, s a severe pains th from my ear all the way down through my arms. Makes my, my uh, arms go numb. Last night I had an attack from 
12 till 3, and I just wanted to die. Wow. I, I, was, fly, I was a search and rescue crewman. and we had, came in for a crash land, and it did my neck a long time ago. Wow. But uh, when you said that, I noticed, my Lord, in the service, I'm whipping around up here, especially that first song when you're doing the country <laughs> praise, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And it is, look, you don't, man, this, look at this. How long have you been that way? How long has it been that way? Since 1971. Wow. Wow. 1971. Wait, wait, time out, time out. So you haven't felt the way you feel now since 1971? Absolutely. I've been in pain for 50 That's years. That's older than Matt. <laughs> uh, did the Lord heal you during that song? <laughs> Must have because I was jumping around kind of weird up here. <laughs> wow. Oh, come on, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. All right. Doesn't have to be your neck, by the way, but this is how things happen a lot. The Lord targets things. I don't know why. I'm an ant. He's teaching algebra. Is, is there anyone else? You, you feel the Lord's healed you tonight. Anyone else? Again? Oh, what happened? Yes, again. Okay, tell us. What month did we come? We came here. I came here months ago. Okay. This is my second time here. I was sitting over here. Uh, we were praying. For Can we healing. give her more juice on that mic? Okay. We were praying for healing, and I remember standing, and the woman that was sitting next to us was praying for her eyes. And she wanted healing in her eyes, and we were all here praying for her and believing that she was going to be healed. Uh -huh. But I had a like that she would be healed and I remember like my arm because I had a uh, rotator cuff tear and this arm I never got sh like shoulder surgery only on this arm so I had pain and I was healed and everybody was standing up and talking about they were healed and I didn't say anything and I remember saying okay well I could submit it online but I never submitted online yesterday you went to church in the sun uh -huh. and I was like you know worshiping <clears throat> sorry uh -oh. I'm gonna try to cut this down because I could talk for hours yeah yeah um, and today, I didn't have pain on my neck. Actually, my sister spoke about it yesterday, that she felt the Holy Spirit yesterday touch her at your sermon. And I didn't come for pain, but I came for healing because the Lord gave me a revelatory dream. And in this moment, when I was... The Lord told you in a dream about tonight? And I didn't know it was about tonight until this night. Okay. Time. Because if it wasn't for my family that healed me from the spirit of oppression, because years ago I just hit my stomach and I'm gonna say this to everybody in this room because I didn't walk with God and when I didn't walk with God I didn't know who God was in my life and I was like so young and I was dealing with this idea of being pregnant and didn't know what to do so I just hit my stomach every day until I miscarried and I never forgave myself while I was fasting doing the Daniel fast and my sister the Holy Spirit fell on her and she just had the spirit of oppression and she told me about the Lord told me that you lost a child and I said why does God keep saying that I was in denial but I was set free but did I forgive myself I'm not sure and I had a dream and there was a child in my dream and the child wasn't mine but the child came up to me and I was singing to it, and I, I just thought as a dream, as is something that God was birthing inside of me. But it wasn't yet ready to be given birth to. And yesterday, you prayed for me. I didn't touch the holy stage, but I was there. And today, somebody said, you, you're a Levite, and you sing, and you're meant to be on stage. Of touching that stage and knowing that what God birthed inside of me, I 
wasn't deserving of, but I know that I am, so I came here today to set myself free and to know that my neck didn't hurt, but if I didn't sit here and say that I was healed for the second time coming here, it just would not be fair. And so I sat here and my neck literally started hurting, and I was just like, maybe that's because my sister's neck was hurting, right? And I raised my hand, and then you said, if you've ever had complications with pregnancy. Oh, did I say pregnancy? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was rude. Wow. And so the dream of me singing to the child, I don't know what that meant, but as I was sitting here, it was, there's a reason why God spoke to me two times today. And if I wasn't obedient, coming here and raising my hand about wow. healing, wow. I wouldn't be healed. So wow. Guys, that's yeah. awesome. Give the Lord praise. Come on. Wow. I, you know, nights like tonight, we could take testimonies all night. This, you can just feel that, that rain. And uh, I just feel like we need to just close our eyes and thank the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read a scripture to you. Can we throw it up on the screen? It is, just stay with me, Joel. Let's stay in his presence here. Oh, the Lord's amazing. I hope some of you are just completely torn up inside in the best way. Go to John chapter 3. Verse 30, I actually spoke on this at Church in the Sun last night at their youth conference, and so many of them are here tonight. Welcome. One of them has the best mustache in history. Him right there. I'm going to grow mine. It looks awesome. Also, Pastor Amran, would you please just stand up, you and your precious wife. This is Pastor Amran from Pakistan. They've come in. And we... we Thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you. They have a very large church and TV network, and they've come. It's a joy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do for the Lord. And they are seeing thousands and millions of, of Muslims touched by the power of the Holy Spirit coming to faith in Jesus. And uh, isn't that wonderful? We honor you. It's a joy to have you here. Thank you. You know, I think I'm good. Joel, you've been working hard. Oh, the Lord's amazing. Go to John 3, verse 30. Are you bored? <laughs> you better not be. I'll give another altar call. <laughs> Wendy will give another altar call. <laughs> you should have seen her up here getting touched by God. She was having trouble standing. <laughs> okay. John 3.30. He must increase, but I must decrease. This is John the Baptist speaking. Before I go to verse 31, the context here is marriage with Jesus. It's John as the bridegroom. I'm sorry. John as the best man, basically, and Jesus the bridegroom. We'll get into that another time. Verse 31, listen carefully, underline this, memorize this. Are you ready? He who comes from above is above all. Let me say that again. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. 
Say, Jesus is above all. Say it again. Jesus is above all. Come on, you've got to say it like you mean it. Jesus is above all. You will be tested your entire life as to whether or not you really believe that. Jesus is above Jesus' image. The Jesus, listen up, listen up. The Jesus people don't talk about the Jesus people. They talk about Jesus. True prophets don't spend their entire life saying, this is how you prophesy. They spend their entire life saying, this is Jesus. You say, what are you talking about? I know exactly what I'm talking about. I said this last week. We'll know we're in a true Jesus movement when Jesus is more preeminent in our hearts than the movement. What are we saying when we say these things? We are in a Jesus movement. What does that mean? Does that mean people are gathering? Or does it mean that Jesus is among us and moving? It's a big difference. I'm not pressing into gathering you here. Our team will tell you that. I need God here. My goal is not a people. My goal is Jesus himself. He, he's got to move beyond theory. Beyond our conversation. Beyond the fact that he's becoming a bit more acceptable and a bit more trendy now. And I'm glad his name is being declared. But the Jesus people are in love with him. Him, the, the real him. So the message, listen up, the message of the church is not church. Oh, I'm going to get emails from my pastor friends. Can I have that bag for a moment there, Nathan? I wrote down some glorious stuff today. And I forgot to grab this. Do you know in heaven we won't be talking about heaven? <laughs> no one's going to write an essay on the street of gold. No. There's a lamb in the midst of the throne. Wow. Wow. Jesus is unto nothing because he is everything. You missed it. You missed it. Jesus is unto nothing because he is everything. There's a perspective now that if we could just get revival, we'd get the right candidate in office. Revival's not unto an election. I'm not against it. Uh, please hear me. I'm just saying, maybe some of you in this room think, if God would just come, then I could see this person elected. But Jesus doesn't work for a candidate. Jesus refuses to be part of anything. Because he is all. All cannot be part of. And the Jesus people spend their life 
longing to love the one who is all. Longing to see more of him, more of his beauty. Longing to have his presence revealed to them, his character revealed to him. They long to know his ways. I don't know about you, but what just happened to Wendy blows me away. She didn't even listen to me. God healed her and then gave her her own personal altar call. After she missed the first one. <laughs> what, what type of Jesus do we serve? He's amazing. Jose, can you shut that door? Thank you, buddy. No, Jesus, he is all in all. He's above all because he's from above. I, I just don't think it's landing. God's moving, but it's just not landing. Because if it landed, you'd, you'd hit your neighbor. You can't sit through what I'm saying right now and go, it's above all. It's from heaven. Yeah, he came from heaven. He's from heaven. And it's above all. Yep, makes sense. <laughs> the fact that you're staring at me is proof we need more. <laughs> the message of the missionary who goes is not go. What do you say once you go? And the message of the great evangelist is not evangelize. And the triumphant message of revival is not revival. <laughs> we don't even know what it is. Everyone has a different answer. What is revival? Ten questions, ten people, ten answers. I'll tell you what revival is. When Jesus comes to live with you. It's Jesus. The message of revival is Jesus. The message of the evangelist is Jesus. The message of the pastor, as I said earlier, is not, this is how you build a big church. The message of the pastor is Jesus, the head of the church. God is raising up pastors and church leaders who learn to bring his presence and keep him when he comes. We're teaching people how to build church. We're not teaching them how to bring the head of the church. I don't want to do a launch party without the Lord. <laughs> rather, don't tell me who won the U.S. Open, but if Jesus wasn't here tonight, I'd rather be watching the Open. And then you should too. I hope you came for him. The last thing I want you to do is come meet us. Oh, this one, this one gets my friends in the Bible Belt every time. <laughs> the message of the Bible is not the Bible. Do you know some of the most anti-Christ opponents of Jesus are theologians who've memorized the Bible? I'm reading you the Bible. This is perfect. The Bible is infallible. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is eternal. The word of God is eternal. It is perfect and forever it is settled in heaven. Our students will tell you they get so much Bible, it comes out of their ears at Jesus' school. I love the word of God. But the message of the Bible is this is Jesus Christ. If, if I don't find him there, listen. I love how Bill Johnson says it. If I don't find him there, it just equips me to debate. 
And lovers don't go to their Bible to get ammo for their next argument. <laughs> lovers go to the Bible because they realize it is the heart of Jesus made available on paper. Hallelujah. Am I boring you? So the message of this Jesus movement is Jesus, not the movement. And in that, he begins to move. And when he moves, mountains bow. Crooked paths are made straight. Mountains are also cast into the sea. Troubled waters are calmed. People get healed. That's what happens when Jesus begins to move. When he comes, he is not a lazy spectator. When Jesus comes, he's full of compassion. And the Bible says his compassion moves him. Moves him. You can learn to draw Jesus' presence straight into your home. When people walk in, they go, oh, God lives here with you. I'm serious. You know, I have children, and it's pretty wild in the living room. My daughter's into just I don't know, but the slime thing, when, I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Every YouTube's on slime or how to make body scrub. Or, and my, my living room, it, sometimes it just looks like a slime factory. It's in the carpet. Oh! <laughs> and Jessie is a neat freak. She keeps a clean house. I'm not joking. We've had, when Michael and Larissa Miller were over from Upper Room, they took a sip of water, put it on our counter. Before they could take their next sip, Jesse had it in the dishwasher. <laughs> and they actually looked at her and go, oh, you're, you're, you're one of those. She's like, <laughs> she said, yeah, I am. I'm, 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 I'm like that. Sorry. <laughs> but man, you know, three kids, they gang up on you. <laughs> My oldest is very neat. The other two need sozo. They're <laughs> a little different there. So sometimes, well not sometimes, daily, I retreat from the jungle <laughs> and I walk into my prayer room and it's a different world. Tangibly, a different world. Steph walked into the prayer room last week and she was st st stricken by the power of God. Eric walked in there a month ago, he goes, it's different here. It's peaceful. It's calm. Well, that's what happens when you're with the Lord for hours and hours and hours. His presence changes things. Your house can become like heaven on earth. <laughs> oh, you ready? And the true theologian has made Jesus his theology. His message is Jesus, not his perfect theology. Ay, ay, ay. And the true apostle is not enamored with the term apostle. He's enamored with the chief apostle. The cornerstone. Upon, listen, upon whom the whole church hinges. True apostolic ministry has one, one focus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come now. Fill this room. Come into my home. 
I have no other, no other sermon. Every song matters. Every key matters. Every stringed instrument matters. You paying attention matters. All of it, listen, all of it plays into something. God coming. That's why I say don't move. Because distraction kills that. We have to get used to doing things biblically. What did Jesus do before he multiplied bread and fish? The Bible says he broke them up into groups of 50 and hundreds. He understood that working a miracle required divine order. And we come in with our latte. We're upset it's got cinnamon on it and not cocoa powder. And we're moving around. This is the holy word of God. And then we leave and say, why don't miracles happen today? And the moment, oh gosh, I'm feisty tonight. The moment, the moment the pastor says, don't move, we go to another church. And we tell that pastor that miracles don't happen at that church. That's what happens. See, we want Jesus to be our shepherd until he tells us to stay within the fence. The slime's messing me up. <laughs> all the fumes, this, all the color, it's just jacking me up. That's apostolic ministry. It's to build a home for God. It's got to be more than handing out our business card. This one. It's so deep. You ready? You're going to need three commentaries in a concordance. Are you ready? <laughs> the Christian's message is Christ. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, yeah. Why would I activate you to get a word of knowledge? you don't know your Savior. See, I've, I, I'm, I'm 22 years old and I've learned, <laughs> why are you laughing? This is blonde. I bleached it for too long. I feel Jesus tonight. I really do. See, I've watched, I've been around a little while now. I've seen what happens when you make detailed word of knowledge is your culture, word, words of knowledge your culture. So all of a sudden, uh, me telling you that you're gonna change the world for Jesus is a lesser prophecy. It's lesser than me giving you your phone number. So, so what we did is we determined as a people what wows us. So I can look at John and Jenna and say, you're going to shake a nation for Jesus. And we go, that was average. But if I give you your bank account number and leave Jesus' name out of it, all of a sudden I'm filled with awe. If a prophet fails to mention Jesus, run. 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 Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. All right, let me keep going here. Let, let me keep going. If it's not about Jesus, it is not Christian. How could it be? If it's not about him, how could it be? Christian.
He is the faith. He's the author and the finisher. May the day come where washing feet wows us. May the day come that a consistent life of devotion wows us. May the day come that someone's eyes who flicker with first love, may that wow us again. May humility wow us again, the humble nature of the Lamb. May loving our enemies wow us again. You understand? May forgiving those who persecute us wow us again. May preaching a faithful gospel wow us again. Do you know what I always love watching at Jesus School? I love the hunger that comes in. And I refuse to turn it off. Bill says this, I've never seen a single revival end because of too much passion. (laughs) And oh man, the first years come in, they're like Holy Spirit gymnasts. (laughs) They come in and I mean, if, if some of them, if you don't look at them, they're not just gonna dance, they're gonna dance three feet away from you so you know they can dance. And some will sing much louder just so you can hear them. And the best part is, is they don't think I can hear them. But I can hear them. And the louder they sing, in my internal registry, I'm going, that'll just be more time off the platform. Because you know when they're singing to Jesus or if they're singing to you. Well, I refuse to quench it. Because I'd rather have these wild, hungry, just the, 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 these longing brides of Jesus coming in with everything they are. But I've learned something. Slowly, slowly, less and less flesh comes to the surface. Less, and, and, and a good leader understands this. I'm going to celebrate what is of the Spirit in them. Intentionally not celebrate the flesh and they will learn very quickly what Jesus is like. No flesh glories in his presence. And now by second semester, they're not calm in a dead way. They just allow the Lord to animate them. I mean, some of the wildest ones now are like so balanced. I mean, you have no idea the stuff I've seen. It's awesome. It's funny. Like some I'll answer, hey, how are you doing? Just Proverbs 16, 11-ing it. You know how it is. I'm like, what in the world is Proverbs 16, 11? Next time just say, I'm good. <laughs> I'm serious. Just Ecclesiastes 2, 18-ing it. You know how it is, man. Wait, what? I asked you your name. What is your name? Can I tell you a funny story? My buddy went out on street ministry with another friend. They were in Panama City. They were in Bible school at Brownsville in the heat of the revival. They were convinced that this poor spring breaker had a demon. So the one guy ran up to the guy. The dude's on spring break. And instead of asking the guy how he is, he said, what is your name? That's it. This guy's like probably holding a a beer on the side of the road. And this dude addresses this supposed demon. What is your name? The guy goes, "Uh, Phil. (laughs) Phil. (laughs) I thought that was great. And then he said, he said, no, no, no. What is your name? The guy goes, bro, you're freaking me out. My name's Phil. The stuff we do. 
We think it's spiritual. It's cosmic. It's weird. And it's not Jesus. I'm not saying Jesus is always going to make sense to you, but there's something beautiful that happens when he begins to do it. When he comes upon you. Listen up. Your activity does not guarantee his. Yielding is not about your activity. It's not about us. I'll never forget I was... I was playing golf with Pastor Rodney once and we were just laughing and I was hitting shots and he was loving watching it as I do. And <laughs> all of a sudden, like on the eighth hole, he snaps. He goes, you don't need more anointing. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, take it easy, you're a little close. Just, we're in the cart. He said, you need to learn to yield more. This was 2015. The whole drive home, I'm like, God, my whole life I heard about yielding. I thought I was doing a decent job. People were getting healed. Our events had, God was moving in the events. I thought, man, it was harassing me. And I'm in my car, right in Lake Mary, and I said, Lord, teach me to yield. I kid you not. Within a second, I find myself in a roundabout. (laughs) Literally. And in less than a second, I come to a yield sign. The Lord's incredible. How he gets us to think things at the right time, I don't know. He's teaching algebra. We're the ant. I came to the yield sign and the Lord said, pay attention now. I stopped, listen up, and the car in front of me led the way. The car who was already on the road led the way. That's how you yield to the Holy Spirit. It's that simple. You let him take the lead. Because he's already on the road you need to get on. He's on the roundabout. See, the reason these meetings matter as far as their detail, this is why. Jeremy Riddle and I were talking about this a while ago. He's so right. He said, when I lead, I begin to realize that God has a bigger plan in that meeting than just me. So when I take the platform, I realize God has an agenda. He has a will that's bigger than Michael. And that God wants to do something in the lives of individuals and corporately in that moment, whether it's a stadium or a church meeting like this. Matt and I were together at the Send Brazil. The first thing I did is begin to sing Agnes Day with Matt. Why? Not because it it, 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 it breaks the ice. Because worship gives me an audience with Jesus. And I don't know where to go until he takes the lead. We don't worship to get to a better moment. Worship is the moment. It's the moment. Worship is the surest road to his manifest presence. Every time. So the entire moment you're taking a step back and allowing the Lord to lead the way on the roundabout. And you yield again and the Lord moves. And you yield again and the Lord moves. This is life in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not weird. And he doesn't need flesh to bring him glory. It cannot. So yielding is actually me stopping. I'll never forget the Holy Spirit teaching me this. He said, every red light for you 
is a green light for me. Because the red light requires humility. God is raising up more people who are saying this in their hearts. Are you ready? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> if you come into his presence with the road map, rather than getting the road map in his presence, you're going to get tired real quick. Just, I, I, I will challenge you. Give me five more minutes. I challenge you. Take a day and spend the whole day with God. This is how you learn. Take a day. I mean, schedule. Get, when you leave tonight, get on your Google Calendar, if, if you're cursed to have one like I am. What happened to the days where I didn't have a calendar? Anyways, we'll get my therapy later. Schedule the day. Get up, shower so the Lord doesn't smell you. Brush your teeth so he doesn't have to smell your stank cotton mouth. <laughs> Put on deodorant. He, 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 he'd appreciate that. Go in your room and say, Lord, I, I'm here from 8 to 4. Well, if you start at 8, by 8.15, you'll be through your prayer list. It'll be done. That's a long one. I have a four-page prayer list that I pray through every day. My family, those people that need to get saved, thank God. That's about an eight minute It's four pages. Because once you're in his presence, you don't have to beg. You just declare it, you know it's done. Because his presence, listen, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. So his manifest presence, in his manifest presence, faith is available. So the goal is not I need faith. The goal is him. I need to be aware of him. And when Jesus is close, his faith is imparted to you. It's called the faith of God. Listen carefully. By 8.15, you'll be through your prayer list. Here's the problem. You have seven hours and 45 minutes to go. Now what? Now what? How long can you read the word? After an hour, you'll need a break. So now you have six hours and 45 minutes. Now what? How many Jericho marches can you do around your little prayer closet? Oh, I'm dating myself. For you prophetic people, your arms will get tired from waving the flag. After 20 minutes, and for you extreme prophets, you can't blow a shofar in there very long, you'll pass out. You'll pass out. You lose oxygen. Hmm. So at best, at best, we're at seven hours. Do you know what happens in that place? You learn something. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. And the Lord watches. He goes, oh, that Jericho march. Pretty cool. Enjoy it. For you old time Pentecostals, you run out of prayer language words and you start repeating them and you get a blister on your tongue from going so hard and the Lord just waits. He'll wait until you let Him lead the dance. Until you allow Him to be bridegroom in the moment and lead the romance. You understand the bride allows Jesus to do all and she gazes at him with every step in mind. That's why the bride loses her name at a wedding and takes his. His identity is hers and she's lost her own. In this place, the Lord starts to move and he talks to you and touches you and begins to move you and take you to the right scriptures and teach you to pray the scriptures. He teaches you to wait in silence. He'll tell you when to pray in tongues. And all of a sudden it doesn't wear you down, but it builds up the inner man. 
What's the point? The more spirit in your life, the less flesh will manifest. How did I get there? I don't know. Only to say this. Jesus must be all. To us, because he is all. And the reason he is all is because he's above all. And the reason he's above all is because he's from above. There is no one like him. So I don't want you to think. I hear people say Jesus is love. You're right, but love is not Jesus. I've heard people say that Jesus is grace. You're right, but grace is not Jesus. Do you understand the difference? He rests on his own. He is not Republican. He is not Democrat. Jesus sits on his own throne. And it's not in D.C. It's way nicer. It's above the highest height. Do you follow me? In Joshua chapter 5, Jericho is about to fall. And there's a reason the Lord is saying this to us tonight. Because there is more opportunity now than ever to be distracted. Don't join the fray. Just keep staring so you pass the test. This is a test for the church. This is a test for the church worldwide. God is watching us argue. He is watching the distraction. He is watching the hours on social media. He is watching all the arguments. He's watching us pray rather than asking for his presence. We're praying into other stuff that only his presence can heal. And God's saying, man, you didn't even get it right in the midst of a plague. You want to go around the mountain again? See, we don't think like the Lord. Jesus is unto nothing better. He is not a bridge. He is the promised land. It's Him. Joshua chapter 5, they're about to take Jericho. And Joshua sees a mighty, with a capital A, angel of the Lord. And whenever you see that capitalized, you know it is Jesus. Jesus is the angel of the Lord there. And Joshua asks a question. He says, are you with us or are you with those in Jericho? Are you on my team or are you with the enemy? <laughs> and Jesus says this, neither I am the captain of the Lord of hosts. You don't get to pick me and put me on your team. This is not basketball in the fourth grade where you line them all up and go, I'll take Charlie. No, no, I'll take Johnny. Jesus is not the first or the last to get picked. We don't pick him and put him on our team to fulfill our agenda. He, he says, no, buddy, you're getting it all wrong. You need me. I am the captain of a greater army and the only reason you're about to win is because I'm here you don't pick me I pick you hear my voice you don't pick me I pick you hallelujah come on close your eyes stand up father in the name of Jesus come on just lift your hands we thank you for your glory we thank you for your presence we thank you for all you're doing we thank you for what you're doing in the nation we thank you for this we we thank you lord jesus for this great jesus movement jesus people are emerging filled with you filled with wonder come on pray filled 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 with awe filled with a hunger for your beauty filled lord jesus with the desire to see you and be with you and adore you and watch you move Hallelujah. Don't ever let it be said of Jesus' image that we rest on laurels, that we call ourselves a Jesus people, yet we're not filled with Jesus himself. Don't ever let it be said. Be our message, be our desire, be our guide, be our goal, be our everything. Hallelujah. Thank you for every miracle tonight. I thank you for every miracle on the live stream in the name of Jesus 
Thank you for every soul saved. And thank you for what you're doing here. In Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord praise. Now, yeah, hallelujah. Listen, before you go, listen, before you go, I want to receive the offering. So we bring the buckets down. If you're watching on live stream tonight, let's be faithful. Guys, come on, let's come into his presence. Oh, by the way, I, did I tell you last Sunday night? Oh, we are under contract on the acreage. Did I already tell you that? It's official. It's official. We're under contract on, 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 on our own land. And now we have a journey to walk through with the county and the city. So pray for favor. Come on, let's come into the Lord's presence tonight with generosity. And let's, let's, let's sow a seed into the work of the Lord. If you're watching online, you can text GIVE to 321-320-8040. If you're writing out a check, you can make it out to Jesus' image. The Lord bless you, Father. I pray you'd increase your people to take the gospel around the world. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can give by text to give. If you'd like to come up, you can come up. Just come slowly. And for those of you who are watching on TV, you can just follow that number. God bless you guys. Love you so much. See you Sunday night. Love you. Bye-bye.